Hi all, let's start with HSG, so hysterosalpingogram. The HSG is going to evaluate the shape of the uterus and check the patency, or how open the fallopian tubes are, using an injection of water-soluble contrast. Most of the female patients that come for an HSG are there due to infertility. Um, an OBGYN will also be included in this exam as long as as well as a radiologist they're going to do it in conjunction it can be it's considered a both a diagnostic study and a therapeutic study some contraindications that i think are fairly obvious but um if the patient is pregnant we should not do an hsg if there is uterine bleeding pelvic inflammatory disease um, also, some things to be aware of would be a contrast media allergy. The patient may need to be pre-medicated prior to. Some indications, infertility is definitely the most common reason. Um, it might be pre- or post-operative evaluation if there was um, a cyst or a tumor or something like that going on. Eshore is a permanent birth control uh, system. After it's placed, it's often checked. Um, to make sure it's still in the right location and preventing pregnancy. Sometimes the contraceptive devices are misplaced or moved throughout the um, abdomen or painful menstruation. Some basic anatomy picture here. Uh, it's an evaluation of the uterus and the fallopian tubes. We're looking to see if the fallopian tubes are open and that the contrast flows through them. There's a small little balloon on the end of the catheter that helps sort of seal the um, area and allow the contrast to fill. It's a diagnostic study. It's gonna determine size, location, and position of anatomy. It can identify lesions, uh, polyps. It's the best study to demonstrate the uterine cavity and the patency or how open the fallopian tubes are. It can also be therapeutic for patients. Some patients um, experience infertility until they go through an HSG. The HSG can actually open up the fallopian tubes. It can um, help the contrast itself can help push um, the fallopian tubes to be a little bit more open. It can stretch out an adhesion if it's there. It can help dilate the tubes or straighten out any kinks if it might be curled around def depending on the position. So. Some patients actually have success after having an HSG. There's something called the 10 day rule and it involves, it's a little bit of radiation safety, but um, for females coming in for an exams of the pelvic region, we should ask when the start of their last menstrual period was, especially for a study like this, which is specifically directly in the area of where um, a fetus could be. An HSG should be scheduled within day seven and day 10 of the start of menstruation. Um, it's you're least likely to become pregnant within 10 days of the start of your know, menstrual period. So being aware of that and the um, OBGYNs that schedule these exams are very aware of their patient's menstrual cycles Many will do a pregnancy test prior to an HSG as well to make sure that this is not um, something that happens. Basic setup, um, there's an HSG tray. Ours are all wrapped in blue. It says HSG right on the sticker. You're gonna need some sterile gloves and there should be a list of our doctors and what size they like. Uh, betadine, a light, there's a little stool for them to sit on. You're gonna need a cannula. Usually ours, I believe, are a size eight, um, but they should be on the little cart. You need a balloon um, syringe. Ours are the little saline injectors for the balloon, and then contrast. The OBGYN should follow a sterile protocol. And then the patient, I would recommend changing them fully um, from waist down, making sure you know that um, we don't get anything on their clothing. Uh, give them some socks so they stay warm and a gown and try and make them as comfortable as possible getting through this test. Try to have them empty their bladder if they can. It just makes it a little bit um, less uncomfortable for them. The contrast in saline. So you're going to use a water soluble contrast. We want it to be water based so our body, the bodies can absorb it and excrete it. You wouldn't inject, say, barium into a uterus. Um, 
I think we were using OptiRay 240 or an Isoview, something this clear water soluble contrast. For us, I believe we drop 20 cc's. They usually only use between five and 10, but um, better to have extra than not. Um, watch for the air bubbles when you're drawing up this contrast. Air bubbles can be confused with a filling defect within the uterus. So make sure as you're drawing up for HSGs, we're watching for those air bubbles. You're gonna either need a pre-filled uh, syringe of saline or you have to draw up a cc of saline for us for um, the balloon on the catheter. At the end, we're gonna document how much contrast we use and that's what we charge in our system. Another, just some hints for setup. Um, you're gonna take the footboard off, move the bucky tray up towards the head so it's not down here where the patient's um, uterus will be. We're gonna use some chucks at the end. Here's that light, the stool, and then we use the white HSG carts and um, you should know where uh, those are located if you've done room 15 floral. You're gonna place a lead marker on the image intensifier. I always use a right. Um, use the disposable marker. And so that way when the radiologist is taking their images, there's um, a right marker placed on the image intensifier. Just make sure it's not in the middle of the uterus. All right, your patient's gonna be uncomfortable for this exam. This is, um, they're nervous for this exam. This is gonna be painful for some. Some women are really just totally amazing and they barely feel anything. And others, I have had screaming, crying, very, very painful, um, extremely uncomfortable. So it's a big range. Um, I think it's definitely based on anatomy and where things are positioned, how much contrast we need. Um, so I just like to prepare them that it's going to be a pretty severe menstrual cramp um, and that you'll be there for them to support them. Most of the OBGYNs have already warned the patients about this. They've been told to take Tylenol or something stronger before the exam um, to prepare them for that. So something to also be aware of too is that a lot of these patients for us come in in the afternoon and um, they have skipped lunch. So I have had a few of these patients pass out a lot of times from nerves um, and not eating lunch and then taking some medication. So something to be aware of uh, is the sort of timing and situation uh, where these exams occur. So just be aware of that, be prepared, it could happen. Um, I always um, kept some snacks on the side just in case. Your fluoroscopy table should be down and make sure there's a sheet under your mattress for when you have to do that pull up and then um, just we don't have stirrups on our table. If your table does have stirrups, use it, but ours don't. So the patient's gonna to scoot to the end and put their heels on the sides. They're gonna start um, with the tray. They're gonna clean the area, place um, the vaginal speculum, similar to that of a pap smear. Clean the cervix, uh, place the Foley catheter inside, blow up the, the balloon. Then we slide our patient up the table Make sure you cover that patient. I pull the image intensifier over and then I go get the radiologist so the radiologist doesn't have to lean over the patient to do it. We'll assist during the exam and then document at the end. Once the procedure starts, the radiologist and the OBGYN will communicate with each other and work together on the timing. They'll inject contrast and uh, the radiologist will be taking images at that time. Most of the time they can stay in a supine position um, if there's a specific filling area that they maybe need to see more of or um, need a little bit of help to get it to flow, they'll oblique the patient's pelvis and, and she may need help with that. So just be there for that. So contrast media is going into um, the uterus and we're starting to see a little bit of contrast and they, they use spilling. They'll say, oh, spilling on the left, spilling on the right. Um, so you see it kind of passing through here this one, uh, the tube is blocked on this side, and this one, both tubes are blocked, and this one is open. Just an example there. Um, so patency, opening, spillage on this side, blockage here, nothing coming out. Uh, it, if your patient has an eshore, so the eshore is a permanent birth control where some flexible metal coils are placed within the fallopian tubes, so there's one on each side. 
and um, often we do a check for that to make sure it's actually in place in preventing preg pregnancy. Uh, it is possible that they move, so we might be doing a check for that. IUDs, uh, so the intrauterine device, it's a little T-shaped piece of plastic. It's inserted into the uterus to provide birth control. So it looks like this image here. Um, and so if you're doing KUBs, you're probably gonna see these as well. Um, so it's the patient's IUD. These can also travel. And if it travels, it can cause a perforation of the uterus. So this one, this one was traveled all the way over here. Um, so that's bad and going to be pretty painful for the patient. So this might be something we run into as well. Documentation. So at the end of the exam, the technologist is gonna go into the synapse system. They're gonna document who the radiologist was or if it was a resident or a PA or a nurse practitioner who we might use. Um, whoever did the exam, we put their name, the OBGYN that was present. You're gonna document your fluoroscopy time dose area product and or your DAP number, the type of contrast to use, so what was the name of it, the strength, so like ISOVU 300 was my example, amount of contrast used, so number of cc's, so if it was four cc's, so you wanna make sure you look at your tray before you throw it away at the end and determine um, how much the OBGYN injected. And then any observations that you made during the exam, if there was a, if there was a contrast reaction um, or anything happened within the exam that you feel would be beneficial to the documentation process, that's where you're gonna put your, in your exam notes. Um, and that is uh, HSG.